Rama Rama. So, this Leela of Lord Nisringa is one of the Dush Avatar that is mentioned in Jayadev Goswami's introduction to Gita Govinda. That's why we sang Tabakara Kamala. That's the prayer by Jayadev. And this whole, this whole thing started because Hiranyakashipu's younger brother, Hiranyaksha, he challenged the Lord to fight. Hiranyaksha had conquered all over the universe and he approached Varuna. But Varuna was very smart and said, I'm too old for this fighting. There's somebody better because Hiranyaksha was saying, there's nobody who can fight me. So Varuna said, ah, there is somebody. You just wait. He will fight you. So Hiranyaksha was very anxious. And so finally he met Lord Baraha. Everybody say. And how did Lord Baraha kill Hiranyaksha? Just like this. Boom. Just like that. Then he pierced him with his tusks. Those tusks, Lord Varaha scooped the earth from the bottom of the universe. And because the Lord was touched, I mean Mother Earth was touched, she gave birth. She gave birth to a demon, Narakasura. And later, when Krishna came, he had to kill his own son, Narakasura. So, because Hiranyaksha was killed by Lord Varaha, Ranyakashipu hated Lord Vishnu, hated him. And at the funeral ceremony, even though he spoke very nice Vedic philosophy, that there's a difference between the soul and the body, and that there's nothing to lament, he didn't really believe it. He was just saying it because he had to somehow or other enliven his relatives who were all lamenting. So Hiranyakashipu acted as if he knew Vedic knowledge, but he didn't believe it. But then Hiranyakashipu said, I am going to search out that Lord Vishnu. He'll kill my brother. My brother! He was so fond of sucking blood, as if that was a great quality. And Lord Vishnu has taken the side of the demigods. He's not impartial. I'm going to find this Lord Vishnu, and I'm going to avenge the death of my brother. So Lord Vishnu was thinking, hmm, wherever I go, this rascal is going to find me chest chase me I don't want to bother with him where can I go where he'll not find me ah I'll enter his heart he'll never find me in his own heart so once when Hiranyakashipu inhaled Lord Vishnu went into his nostril and remained hidden in the heart of Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyakashipu searched all over the universe. Where is that rascal, Lord Vishnu? Come and fight me. But he could not find him. So Hiranyakashipu said, he must have died. So then Hiranyakashipu decided, Lord Brahma, he has achieved his position because he has performed the greatest austerities. I'm going to do better than Lord Brahma. I want to be king of the universe. I want everyone to worship me. So Hiranyakashipu stood on his tippy toes with his hands outstretched. And he did that for years and years and years. And all kinds of insects and ants and ah uh -uh, Moths, they ate his flesh till all that was left 
was the skeleton. But he maintained the spirit soul in that skeleton form. And in time, his whole skeleton was covered like an anthill. And because of us austerities, fire came out of his skull. And this fire was heating. This is the original global warming. The whole universe became so hot, the demigods went to Lord Brahma, do something, do something. We can't take this heat, it's too much. So Brahma came on his swan carrier. And as we read, he has a kamandalu. And in that kamandalu was transcendental water. And he could see where Hiranyakashipu because of the fire and smoke coming from the anthill. And Brahma took some water from his kamandalu and sprinkled the anthill. And Hiranyakashipu came out. But now he has a new body, youthful. And it's so powerful, it can withstand Indra's thunderbolt, which normally is invincible. Nobody can tolerate Indra's thunderbolt. But this Hiranyakashipu, his body is now unique, strong, is empowered. Hiranyakashipu does dandavats to Lord Brahma, praises him, glorifies him. He says, I have a desire. And Brahma said, yes. Because of your austerities, you have conquered me. I must fulfill. So, what did he do? I want to be immortal. Brahma said, ah, 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 ah. I'm not immortal. I can't give you something I don't have. Then Hiranyakashipu said, I don't want to die daytime or nighttime. So when did Lord Nishringa come? dusk. It's not day. It's not night. I don't want to die by any weapon. How was he killed? Tavakara Kamala by the nails. Nails is not a weapon. Unless you're a woman with those. Ever see those long nails? The Putana nails, I call them. Be careful. Huh? Yes. But have you seen the modern women when they come out of the, they have these, and they have like decorations? <laughs> I don't want to die by any creature created by you. But is Lord Vishnu created by Brahma? No. I don't want to die in so many, in the land or in the earth. So where was he killed? On the lap. In this way, he kept all the benedictions intact. That's why Nisringa chastised him. Hey, don't do this again, okay? Don't, you're bothering me. Don't do this. So then, after getting all the benedictions, then Hiranyakashipu declared himself, I am now supreme. And was mentioned, only Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva did not bow down to Hiranyaka. Narada says, even I had to bow down to Hiranyakashi. Narada. So Hiranyakashi Pu, it was explained, he was always intoxicated, drinking wine and liquor. Therefore, his eyes were bloodshot. If you ever seen a drunkard, you can tell the eyes are a bloodshot. Before I was a devotee, I knew many such bloodshot demons. Yes. And Hiranyakashipu, his very name, Prabhupada explains. What did he like? Gold and soft cushions in order to enjoy women. And he would always berate the demigods. He would chastise them belittle them, berate them. And 
he would send his servants to earth and kill cows and destroy trees and harass the Brahmins and devotees. He didn't want any sacrifices done. In fact, Harandi Kashipu wanted all the worship to go to him because he thought, I am God, I am the Supreme. Everybody should worship me. But Prahlad was his fourth son. Now, the demigods were correct. They thought, oh, Kayadu is pregnant. He must be a demon because in those days, naturally, people took birth according to their families. But it appears the Lord had something in mind because even though Hiranyakashipu was the Adi Asura, this was the first demon, Hiranyaksha, and they were the first demons. They were the Adi demons in the demon success disciplic succession the original terrorist the chapter said the said the chapter said Hiranyakashipu terrorizes the universe where are these terrorists coming from they're coming from Hiranyakashipu Sampradaya so Hiranyakashipu was torturing everyone but he had this son Prahlad who was a nice pure devotee and the description Narada gives is very similar to the description in Bhagavad Gita in the last half of chapter 12 Rama you have read ba chapter 12 Bhagavad Gita it gives the qualities of Krishna's dear devotee that same description is pretty much there in the Bhagavatam when Narada is describing the character Prahlad Prahlad was so advanced that he would play with Krishna and sometimes he would feel Krishna's hand on his hand. Who likes that? I would love that, huh? Krishna plays with you and puts his, oh, just thinking about it, wonderful. So Prahlad goes to school and he run you Kashipu like a good father he wants to see the progress report. Prahlad! Yes, father. Come, sit on my lap. And he smelled his head. Ah, my boy. Did you ever smell your son's head? Isn't that nice feeling? Do you smell your son's head? Huh? You should do that. It's very nice. It's described it's bona fide <laughs> no smell there after taking a shower that's the best time not with the oil stop with the oil so Prahlad yes father tell me my boy what are they teaching you in that school what's the best thing you have learned Prahlad said ha <laughs> Someone like you, he called his father, best of the demons. My dear best of the demons, my advice to you is you should give up this householder life and you should go to the forest. In fact, you should go to Brindavan. He said that. You should go to Brindavan and practice Krishna consciousness. Hiranyakashipu can't believe it. What is this nonsense coming from his son? So he chastises the cert teachers. What are you teaching this boy? But the teachers said, we don't know where this is coming from. Maybe there's some devotee, some Iskan devotee there preaching. Maybe there's, in disguise, somebody has entered. Somebody has entered. I want you now to teach this boy very carefully. Train him nicely. I want him to be like me. I don't want this Krishna consciousness. So the teachers took him away and they chastised Prahlad. Prahlad, we're not teaching you like this. Where is this? Why are you saying this? 
And Prahlad spoke to his teachers. Yes, you want me to learn all these materialistic things based on enmity and friendship? This is all nonsense. So they chastised Prahlad and they tried to teach him regularly. But when they would go for lunch, the teachers would leave. Prahlad would gather his class friends. Come here. Come here. I want to tell you something really nice. And the boys were innocent. They were all five years old like him. So they said, okay, what is it? And they, he said, I want to teach you something called Krishna consciousness. And so what did they do? They did kirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. I like it. Then the teachers came in. Stop this nonsense! Prahlad, what are you doing? What is this nonsense? But the boys, they said to Prahlad, Prahlad, you're one of us. Nobody has come here and taught this. Where did you learn all this? Prahlad said, oh, when I was in the womb of my mother, Narada Muni came and he taught me the essence of Bhagavad Dharma, Krishna consciousness. So when Prahlad came out of the womb, he was already self-realized, full of Krishna consciousness. So I once again, Prahlad was summoned by his father. Prahlad! Yes, father. Come, sit on my lap now. Your teachers have assured me that you have learned everything properly. Now, tell me what you have learned. And then what did Prahlad say? Sravanam kirtanam, Vishnu smaranam, padasevanam, archanam vandanam dasyam, sakyamatman nevedanam. Prahlad said, in my opinion, the topmost education is these nine processes of devotional service. And he used the word Vishnu. And when Hiranyakashipu heard this, he threw Prahlad off his lap and said, Now you are my enemy because you have taken the side of Vishnu who killed your uncle. So you are my enemy now. You're no longer my son. I must kill you. But no matter what Hiranyakashipu did, he could not kill Prahlad threw him under the feet of elephant. What did the elephant do? Put him on his head. He put him in a snake of the pit of snakes. The snakes didn't bite. He put him in a big pot to make Prahlad Pakora. But the oil didn't burn his tender five-year-old body. He threw him off a cliff. Krishna was there to capture him. And he told his wife, give me his food. He put poison in the food. Prahlad took the food and offered it to Krishna, ate it. The poison didn't act. He tried time and time again to kill. So finally Hiranyakashipu said, Prahlad, where do you get your powers to defy me, to challenge me? Hiranyakashipu! Prahlad said, the source of my strength is the source of your strength, God. And Hiranyakashipu laughed, God, Prahlad, there's no, I am God, Prahlad. You should worship me. And Prahlad said, no, you are not God. You are not God. Hiranyakashipu said, okay, where is your God? And Prahlad said, Vasudeva, he's everywhere. 
and you run, you guys, you laughed. <laughs> You're just a five-year-old boy. What do you, okay. Prahlad, you say your God is Amir, so is he in the pillar? Prahlad said, of course. Watch, Prahlad. I draw my sword. You will see me kill your God, and then you will bow down and worship me. But when he struck the pillar, who came out? The Sringa Bhagavan Aki kept all of Brahma's uh, benedictions intact. And it wasn't mentioned in the summaries, but after he pulled out the intestines, he made a garland with his intestines. And then he took Hiranyakashipu's heart out and threw it on the ground. He was so disgusted with Hiranyaka. Just threw his heart on the ground. And he was roaring. And all the demigods came, oh Lord Nisringa, they all worshipped him, but he was still roaring. Brahma told his wife, Lakshmi, do something. And she said, oh, 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 oh. I've never seen him so angry. I'm not going in front of him. So then Prahlad was pushed by Lord Brahma, do something, do something. Prahlad offered obeisances. The Sringa saw Prahlad, touched his head, and he became not Ugra Nasringa, but Shanta Nasringa. Then Prahlad offered his prayers. And that we have to end there. Everybody chant the Maha Mantra. <laughs> <laughs>